Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. Talktainmentradio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio. The way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. Live call-in talk show. Dial 1-877-932-9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. <laughs> This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Welcome to TalkTimidRadio.com. We go where you go, the world's greatest radio. You are now in touch with the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is radio the way it should be heard. Heard for Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019. Today's subject or topic will be words, words words, the use of words, sentence structure, do you understand what that means? We will have Mr. Fuller address those and of course um, any other questions and gmails and things that will you know will come in. Get in contact with the show you can do so by calling 1-877-932-9766. You can also YouTube us all you have to do is go to the YouTube channel, type in the word Talktainment, and then type in the word radio, scroll down to Talktainment number two, and then you are there. While you are there, make sure that you subscribe and like us. You can also, if you would like to Gmail me, you can do so by um, doing this, the numero seven, Mr. Bobby, at gmail.com. The numeral seven, Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y, at gmail.com. I will get that. Uh, you can also do this. You can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment. That's to review or listen to the whole show in its entirety. But what we would like for you to do is just go to the talktainmentradio.com homepage, click on listen live, and you're right there. Hit the subscribe and like button there. Uh, let's get some um, stuff out of the way for Brother Jabari who has uh, called in or written in. Uh, we're still on the straw men, still investigating three years now. Uh, straw men and the uh, your CVQ uh, trust accounts, They, you know, you should understand that and read that. It's quite complicated on, pur- on purpose, but we are still efforting to do that. A big thank you to uh, Miss Jane Lance Mario Turan, your questions will be in rotation today along with Homeschool 257. You're, up, you're on deck. Okay, one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number you call to get in contact with the show. And let's get started. Mr. Fuller, good morning, and how are you this Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019? Good morning. I'm still learning. You're still learning. As you can see on the screen, for those of you who are uh, on YouTube, there is the book written uh, right on the screen, and Mr. Fuller will be speaking about that, and every answer will be from basically from this book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. We need this book. It's like a manual, an operating manual, to understand what's going on. Mr. Fuller, I uh, entitled today's program "Words," and I often said, often heard you say that if you want to understand anything, that you need to ask questions, and questions generate more questions. As I was doing some uh, research uh, this week, in particular the uh, strawman and CVQ accounts that were created off of your birth certificate, I discovered uh, many a thing, particularly in court proceedings 
and not understanding it totally, but I discovered that when you walk into a courtroom, that there is a there are procedures that go on that are well, I'll put it this way, far above my head that I had no idea, a concept, that they were speaking in a language, even though I thought that I understood the words that were being said, but I understand that it is not exactly the words that I thought they were, which made me think of what you have often referred to in your in your title, compensatory, or a made-up uh, words so that you could get an understanding as to what you were saying and to communicate with other people. Uh, words. What do words mean to you or uh, how would we address this title about the importance of words? Words are just tools. Tools for doing what? Communicating. Ideas and intent and what people intend to do or, or describing something. Uh, they're just tools, like you go, uh, like a pair of pliers or a saw. Uh, you go and get to the tool chest and you take out a hammer, and a hammer can only be used for a limited number of things. Uh, you put the hammer down and you get a screwdriver, and that can be used for a limited number of things, depending on what you intend to do, what the intention is. And that's how words are supposed to be used. They're just tools of communicating ideas about what to do, what not to do, what has happened, what should happen, uh, what is happening, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you try to use the terms in such a way that whomever you're talking to or writing to understands exactly what you're saying and why you're saying it mm -hmm. and what the intended result for all of the communication is supposed to be. And so presumably they're just tools to usually to answer questions that are asked because you come into the world asking questions. Yes. And uh, you leave the world asking questions. Okay. I think even in religion, I think uh, according to some scholars, Bible scholars, uh, in the religion of Christianity, mm -hmm. I think that uh, the person in the New Testament referred to as Jesus the Christ left the world asking a question. Uh, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, or words of that effect. I'm not a Bible scholar as such, but there are those who are who can either confirm that or say that I've made a mistake, which I may be. That may not have been the last thing that was said by that character. But the main point that I'm making is uh, people come into the world asking questions. Babies are born asking questions. Now the baby cries out in the baby language babies come into the world crying and that cry those are words that the baby is using to communicate uh, and I came to the conclusion that since babies don't come here laughing babies come into the world crying they're sending a message to the world that everything is out of order absolutely everything the baby can sense that before the baby opens his eyes, but it can open his mouth, and out of that mouth will come a cry. And usually that's how we know that the baby is now alive, quote, unquote, uh, a word that is used. Mm -hmm. That's a word. The baby is now alive. Why? We heard the baby cry out. So the baby came here crying, but in baby language, that is a word. That cry is a word. And you might, it's, of course, this is entirely speculated, uh, ent entirely uh, something that you can guess about, but presumably, since babies don't come into the world laughing, they come here crying. In almost all cases, if they open their mouths at all, it's a cry. The baby can sense that the world is completely out of order. 
the baby is sending a message. Uh, everything is, why'd you drop me off here? I mean, mm -hmm. at this time, at this place. Mm -hmm. This is a mess. Okay. I shouldn't be here in this mess. I think that's what the baby is really saying. Yes, sir. So if that's just an opinion. Oh. Okay. But that's a form of communication. Communication. To cry out. Mm -hmm. okay. That's what that is. Yes, sir. Okay, we are uh, speaking of words on today's show being Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2019. Uh, let's take this phone call. Line number one. Okay, line number one. You're on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Yes. Hello. Um, my name is Don Arrow. I'm calling in from Pennsylvania. Um, I just have one question for Mr. Neely Fuller at the moment. I was just curious about why isn't um white supremacy more thoroughly understood as far as it, as long as it's been going on, why are we still reacting to it at the base level and why aren't we more mature in how we deal with white supremacy and, and the injustice that it, it, it promotes and is the result of it. Thank you. All right. Well, the conclusion that I came to, if I understand your question, is the quote that I have on the first page of the uh, updated version and also the original version of the textbook for victims of white supremacy is if you do not understand white supremacy which is racism or racism which is white supremacy what it is and how it works everything else that you understand will only confuse you if you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Now what that means is, presumably, uh, I classify them in the nine areas of activity, the people of the planet, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and if you are a person anywhere on the planet and you do not understand that the system of racism, which is a system of mistreating people based on color in the form of something called white supremacy that was invented by somebody at some time, if you don't understand how that system works, what it is and what it's based on, and how it works in all of those areas of activity that I just named, then you will be confused. And we're all confused, including myself, even though I'm aware of the system of white supremacy, but if I really understood how it worked in every area of activity all of the time, then I think that we'd be a long ways toward solving this problem in just a few weeks. If, you know, because then I could impart that to people and they recognize it to be the truth. Or if anybody discovers how the system of racism, white supremacy works in any one of those areas of activity, and uh, other people can come up with the other areas and put it all together, then, like all problems, once you understand what a problem is and what's causing it, then you can solve it almost immediately. Because anything that people put together, people can take apart. The system of racism was put, a, put together by people. That's an artificial construct. That's not a natural construct. That was something that was assembled by people. But the people who put it together put it together very carefully, and they disguise how, what it is, and how it works. Yes, the average person, you know, does white supremacy really exist? Is there... There's such a thing as white supremacy that affects everybody all over the world, every minute of every day, that dominates their behavior in all of the areas of activity. Does that really exist? The average person would think about it for maybe, and it's been my experience, for a couple of minutes and say, no, it's a whole lot of other things that influence people more than that. I mean, racism is just something you run into every now and then. I mean, you know, but, you know, it's no big deal, uh, except when it is a big deal to the individual block. 
whatever it is that you are planning on doing. And it's going to do great harm to whatever it is you are planning on doing if you're a person of color and on a planet called Earth in 2019. Now that statement is either true or false. Top10atradio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and politics. Now here's a, a couple that I'm going to uh, share uh, with you. Wiggins World, All in the Family, and This is Libby. Now, all of these shows are exclusive to talk to him at radio.com. Now, to access these shows, just go to the talk to him at radio.com homepage and click on programs. And there you will find a new and updated list of the shows that talk to him at radio.com carries. In my opinion, all of them are good shows and reach specific needs. So go to the talk team at radio.com homepage, click on programs, look at it, whichever one you want to listen to, and hit the like and uh, subscribe button to that. From talk team at radio.com, radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host on the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr., and we've been discussing, or we opened up the discussion today, being Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2019. We opened up the discussion, and we're going to focus in words, the use of words, particularly in, in language. What does a word mean? What does the phrase mean? Words, you have to understand that. But right now, we're going to go to the phone lines. Line number one. Okay. Line... Line number one, you're on with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. What is your question? Yes, hello. Um, it's Darnell again. Um, Mr. Neely Fuller, as far as words are concerned in, you know, everyday life, we have to use them. So if we don't understand words and how they support white supremacy, is it fair to say that if we don't use words properly, then directly and indirectly we are supporting white supremacy and the oppression that we are currently under? And if that's the case, we have to thoroughly understand it in order for us to not be victimized by it. That's it. Mr. Fuller? Well, if I understand the question, uh, you have to, st to study words that are used, and the best way to study anything is through the process of asking questions. Mm -hmm. All problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. Uh, in my opinion, there's no other way to solve problems. So if a person says, well, say, for example, uh, the word peace, or the word justice, or the word truth, and a person uses these words, it's, uh, in order to get an understanding and communicate correctly, you will ask what? a question about what the word peace means. What is peace? What exactly is peace? What is a peaceful situation, sir or ma'am? Well, can you tell me exactly what you mean when you say that what I want is peace? I want to have peace of mind. What do you mean by that? Peace of mind by doing what? Or by somebody else doing what? If you're not doing it, somebody else is doing it. Who is that somebody else, and what would they be doing? Uh, what would you be doing? What do you mean by it? How do you know it when you got it? What What is it? What's the definition of it? That's all you have to do. And, and by asking questions, like I said, all problems are solved, and communication, failure to communicate, is a great big problem all over the world, 24 hours a day. People fail to communicate, and that brings about more problems. So if you want to really solve problems, ask the definition of words, because that's an excellent way to start. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, people just throw out words, sometimes by the bucket pool. Mm -hmm. And everybody's listening, and everybody thinks sometimes that they know what 
it was being said, but they leave scratching their heads, and you should never leave a conversation scratching your head wonder what was being said. Mm -hmm. It means you should go back and, and, and see that person, find that person that you just had that conversation with, and say, wait a minute, if you have time, could you start all over again? Because I don't understand what you said. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Yes. You said a lot of things to me, but I don't understand what you said. Mm -hmm. So is there any way you can explain it in a way that I would understand? Mm -hmm. Just like on this program. Oh, yes, program. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to explain things that I say. Yes, sir. Uh, I remember, but I can't specifically designate or assign, assign the, the the program that we discussed, but I remember one time you had mentioned the word etymology, and I didn't know what that was, but what I did do was go back, or etymology, how, however it is pronounced, and that's important also, but I went back and began to do a study on that to find out what does the, what does etymology mean, and that opened up another door, or more doors about words, the origin, where they came from, the, the, ori the origination of them, how are, how are they used, or what do they mean. So again, that is uh, parlaying on what you were saying about the answer to any problems is to ask questions, even though they do generate more questions, but it also can help us to understand what's going on, etymology, and I still do that. Okay, let's go to uh, Gmail. Now, this was, you answered two of, uh, of his questions last week. The um, the first question that uh, you answered was, what is the criteria for determining who needs the most help? And the second question you answered, does making sure no one is mistreated include white people? This is the third question in a series of four. He says, Mr. Fuller, should blacks in the U.S. be concerned with the immigration of other non-whites? Be concerned? Uh, the question is, should they be concerned? Well, uh, well, people moving around are moved around because the white supremacists, if they are people of color who are being moved, the white supremacists are causing the movement. See, so the, since the question is, should black people be concerned, we should be interested in anything that's going on on the planet uh, where people are involved in, in significant numbers and people are being affected by it. Uh, but what the interest is, what form that interest is, I mean, now uh, that calls for a discussion. Uh, interested how? You know, what, what would be our interests, uh, people of color? There are people of color who are being moved around. So the first thing, if a person is interested, if I was interested in that, and I am interested in people being moved around, because non-white people in the system of white supremacy are moved around all the time because they are forced to. They're forced to move. They're forced to move from their apartments. They're forced to move from neighborhoods. They're forced to go and try to find jobs where there are no jobs. Uh, uh, Non-white people are immigrating from certain streets and certain neighborhoods because there's gunfire going on all the time. And so a black lady who had two offspring gunned down a couple of weeks ago, and they are dead now, and she raised them up, you know, 14 to 16 years old, uh, a, a boy and a girl, or two boys or something, and they were gunned down in the streets, and what is she saying? I got to get out of here. I mean, nobody cares about me. Nobody cares. You know, I, I've, I've worked hard. I mean, and had worked two jobs and whatnot, and uh, came home tired, and, and try to put these two boys through school, they never got in trouble, and yet they were walking down the street and somebody tried to rob them or something, and they wound up dead, you know, 14 and 16. They are, they're gone now. I mean, I worked all those years for nothing, for nothing. They are dead now. So, they, you know, I got to immigrate now. I got to move again and again 
and again and again and again because everywhere I go and it's a whole lot of people of color terrible things happen and this is all over the world as we speak now all right and it's going to continue as long as we don't deal with the root cause and the root cause is the system of white supremacy now people who are trying to cross borders all over the world it's not going on just in one or two places it's going on 24 7 everywhere because the white supremacists have something called racial dislocation well if it looks like black people people of color anywhere are getting halfway stable the first thing they do is make trouble wherever they are i mean whether it's drugs or guns or whatever but some kind of trouble is going to start if the people are doing well and and see everybody seems to be getting along and whatnot the races are not going to have that they're not going to allow black people or, or people of color to do that any place any place on the planet that's what white supremacy does so what what is one way they do to disrupt that they come among you wherever you are and they start stuff they'll set one tribe against the other by giving one tribe guns and food or whatever it takes and then start a rumor saying that the other tribe doesn't like you for some reason or another or they're coming after you or, or they are burden to you and so you ought to just get rid of them make them get them on the move and they'll start gangs they form these gangs drugs wherever you find drugs that's the white supremacists they're behind that they're the masters of all drugs everywhere on the planet okay and they distribute it where they want it and where it's going to be very disruptive that's just one thing that they use but they use the educational system they use all of their systems economic systems educational systems sex systems religious systems whatever systems or subsystems you already have they come in and they infiltrate and they start problems there so everybody winds up just like that lady that i just pointed out as an illustration saying i got to get out of here i have to in the words of the caller immigrate but actually you are being dislocated. You are being run out of the place where you are and run out of the place where when you leave a place, you gotta be going someplace. Mr. So Kenya. you can only go where the white supremacists allow you to go. And then they say, you know, why don't you stay where you are? Well, I can't stay where I am because you have completely messed that up. Mr. Fuller, I'm going to get that right there. Compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. And we are discussing words the use of words how do you uh, what do you understand about them how do you construct sentences to be able to effectively communicate with somebody words even as you call in your words are very important and uh let's see here mr fuller has been addressing uh those uh uh, uh, questions and uh, his thoughts on that, suggestions on that. But right now we go to the phone lines. Uh, caller number one, I believe it is, line one? Okay, line one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Yes, hello. Um, Mr. Bobby, I wanted to know if I could ask Mr. Nelly Fuller more than one question. If if it's quick, because there are many people that want to come in and I'm backed up on Gmail. Yes. So, but yes. go ahead. Um, I just want to know, um, the first question is, has Mr. Nelly Fuller um, heard or watched a movie called The Course 110th Street? Uh, say that again. Have you watched or heard of a movie titled The Course 110th Street? I think it's a black um, drama well, yes, movie. I've heard of a movie. I think I saw that movie uh, starring Anthony Quinn uh, many yes. years ago. Yes, yes. Um, I was wondering... Do you have any lessons that you pull from it? Because now I look at everything as edutainment, and I've seen it for the first time the other day, and, and it just blew my mind. Oh, well, I don't remember much about the movie, so I can't comment on it because I don't remember much about it, except I just remember the title and the star the character name, Anthony Quinn, and it took place, I believe, in uh, the setting of the movie was in Harlem, New yes. York. Yes, so. okay. But I don't remember the details of the movie. But I always tell people, whatever movie you're looking at, try to look at whatever the lessons are that mm -hmm. can be used. Now, lessons for what? Just two simple things. What to do and what not to do. What works and what doesn't. And that's, that's the main thing you look for in looking for any, uh, in any story, 
learn in anything. Try to learn, or, or just anything that you see going on in front of you. Try to learn just one of two things, what to do, what not to do, and which includes what to say, what not to say, and how to say it, and how not to say it. And uh, that's what you look for in, in every scene, because there's a lesson in every fictional movie or everything that, you know, that's based on uh, fact and truth. But there's a lesson you can learn just by being there. Or whether there are any lessons, uh, a number of lessons to be learned other than some movies don't really impact any lessons at all. Uh, it's just a lot of action. But the only lesson that you learn is out of the whole thing, maybe a two-hour movie, is that it's just one or two things that you do or don't do. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly a lot of the movies that are made today because they're just made for sound effects and a lot of noise Confusing. for the most part with no really storyline and not a whole lot of lessons to be learned other than just how the movie was made with a lot of fun and, you know, and cars turning over and things like that. Okay, what's yes. your second question, sir? It's because um, there's this um, cliche, you know, they say um, the two most important times in your life is when you're born and the second is when you find out why you're born. But I feel like instead of the second one being so important, I think it's when you realize what white supremacy is and you fully understand it because then it brings everything into perspective. Like your whole life, your existence, why you do things, why things are done a certain way. It, it, just, it just makes your life purposeful then because you know where you stand and what you should be doing if you don't want to be a victim of it and I, I feel like it's like Mr. Neely Fuller always says he says it's, it's right in plain sight the people that are most to blame are right in, right in plain sight and, and the way they do it is it, right in front of your face but it's like you get so used to seeing some things you get desensitized like you, you, you grow up in the zoo so you never know what nature is the zoo is just natural to you but it's, it's, it's not your natural environment but um yes that's, that, that, that's my question. Okay, Mr. Yeah, Fuller? That's true. Well, see, uh, there's a saying in the textbook for victims itself. In racial matters, many look, but few see. Mm. See what? See what you're looking at. You're looking at it all the time. It's the forest and the trees thing. In other words, the person is standing there saying, I'm looking for the forest, but I can't see the forest because the trees are in the way. But someone probably has to tell you the forest and the trees are one and the same. <laughs> so you're trying, you're saying the trees are in the way and you can't see the forest. So, so it's the same way with the system of white supremacy. Yes. The victims of it are, are looking at it all the time, 24 hours a day. Everything that you're looking at is a, is a result of directly and indirectly of some aspect of the system of white supremacy. Everything you see people doing and not doing and everything that people are going around saying they want to do, when you examine it, it's being motivated by the most powerful government that the world has ever seen. And that is the system of white supremacy. But we don't recognize it as being that. And we call it by all kinds of things because we have been taught to call things by names that don't fit. Yes. By whom? <clears throat> by the usual suspects, the white supremacists themselves. Yes. This is why the importance of words and what they mean or don't mean is why we are having this particular uh, discussion. Let's go to the phone lines. Line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Hello? Yes. Uh, recently in New York State, a group of coal workers won the lottery. My question, Mr. Fuller, what does the coal say about playing the lottery? Is it something good or is it we should avoid it due to white supremacy not want, wanting us to save our money? Thank you. All right. Well, well, it's something I would not recommend because too many people, according to the information that's come to me, spend too much money on that type of thing 
Now, a person may dabble in it because everything in the system of white supremacy is a lottery. Everything when it comes to a non-white person. But if you play what they call, you know, uh, they'll say that it's going to be a billion dollars and uh, all you have to do is try to win the billion dollars by submitting uh, as much as or as little as, as little as a dollar. Well, it comes down to this one basic question. Can you afford to throw away that dollar? Can you afford to throw away that dollar? Because you shouldn't ever put down, say if you're using dollars, or dollars is the medium of exchange in the area of the world where you are, or, you know, in the other areas of the world that might be uh, called by some other name, a pound, uh, in some places or something like that, or uh, Kruger land, if that's something that's still around. Um, but can you afford to throw it away? Because chances are that's what you're doing. Now, I've seen people in, in a land, I mean, and they're, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars here in the Northwestern Hemisphere. Now, the question is, would you actually walk down the street and actually toss uh, $50 out of the car window while you're driving, just reach in your pocket, take $50 out and throw it out the window. Can you really afford to do that? Now, if you can't afford to do that, then don't spend that $50 buying a lottery ticket if you can't afford to throw it away because chances are that's exactly what you're doing. Yes. Okay, talktamedradio.com is a station where you, we go, where you go. Yeah, all you have to do is download the talktamedradio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. And that's radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I'm the co-host on the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller. And our subject for this Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019, is words. 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 Mr. Fuller has been addressing this here in the first hour. One eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six. But it is at this particular time that we have set aside for Mr. Fuller to discuss his book, the latest updates, and whatever information that he deems pertinent. Mr. Fuller, go ahead. Yes, you can get the book by going to producejustice.com. Producejustice.com. And what will come up on the screen is a brief description of a basic textbook, uh, an updated version, and also the original version that some people have asked for. I don't know why, but some people said they uh, like the first edition, too, that came out in 1984. But you have the revised expanded edition of the textbook workbook for victims of white supremacy and revised expanded form in 2016. And then there is a, an, an addition to the basic book that came out in 2010. The addition to the basic book was the word guide, and it, was, it came out in 2010 prior to the revised expanded edition because it was an, an extension of the word guide section of the 1984 edition and that's why it has this different dates on it logically speaking you would think that the word guide since it's an edition came out in 2010 then why would a revised expanded edition come out in 2016 which was after 2010 but that's the explanation for it because it was just an additional in addition to the word guide because there is a word guide in the 1984 edition. But all three of the books are still valid, including the original 1984 edition. But there's much more in the 2016 edition. I have to emphasize that to people because sometimes they may get confused. The 2016 edition is the updated edition and it covers just about everything that's in the 1984 edition, plus a lot more, and that's 2016, and the word guide is something we're discussing even here on this program today. It's not a dictionary. It doesn't 
hates your addiction, it, but it uh, it is a word guide showing you some specific words. Nowhere near most words in the English language. Nowhere near that. But a sort of a guide to lead you in the way of thinking, of asking questions about words that are used commonly, uh, or words that are used, not, some of them not so commonly, uh, including some slang terms and whatnot that people use, that people are supposed to understand, but sometimes can cause a lot of confusion. So the way to deconfuse any situation is by asking questions. So this word guide gives a lot of instructions about what questions to ask about certain words that are used, particularly within the context of the system of white supremacy. And the basic textbook is about what to do and say for an individual person. The textbook for victims of white supremacy, what an individual person can do to counteract the effects and eventually eliminate the system of racism and replace it with a system of justice. What the individual person, the individual victim can do, and what you can say on a daily basis that supposedly, hopefully, can help you to navigate through this system that we're all born in, the people who are on the planet now. Both white and non-white were born in the only government that's on the planet that's worthy of the name government, and that is the system of white supremacy. Uh, it's not white people's fault that they're born, born into the system, but it is their fault if they say that the system is just fine and should be maintained and expanded and kept forever. The white people who have made that decision are racist. Now, they didn't invent it, but they were brought up in it. And the victims of racism were brought up in it. And this is what the book is about. But you can get the books by going to ProduceJustice.com. All righty. All right. Let's do this. Uh, let's go to the phone lines, line number one. You're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello. Um, it's Mr. Walker, um, Darnell, Mr. Bobby, and Mr. Nelly. Um, I just have a question about the word temper. That's in the chapter, I'm not sure what chapter it is, but it's on page 66. 66? Control your temper. 66, okay. Yes. Yeah. And it says temper serves a purpose. It didn't really elaborate. I guess I didn't read it, but it said it should be controlled. I realize that our temper as non-white people gets us into a lot of unnecessary situations and situations that we later regret. So I want to know what purpose does temper serve and how can we best employ it in our use in the production of justice? Thank you. Okay. Mr. Fuller? Well, you use uh, temper is just an emotion. Fear is an emotion. Happiness is an emotion. Joy is an emotion, and whatever that means when you describe in detail whether joy is happiness and happiness joy. So temper is an emotion. All emotions serve a purpose, but temper serves a purpose. You're supposed to have a temper because it does exist, but you're supposed to use temper like you use everything else in an intelligent manner. Mm -hmm. By intelligent, you mean what? Meaning, so you get the best possible result. That's why people, I think, it's a cliche saying, don't lose your temper. Meaning you have the temper, but don't lose it. Yes. Okay? Meaning, temper, temper just means a condition in which you are aware of something, probably, that exists, that shouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, you know, it's, 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 but it's something that's passing, which is why temper itself is kind of associated with the word temporary, okay? Meaning it's brief. So, but you use it to get, you know, your, your energy, your, your, that's burst of energy that you have that something is out of order. Mm -hmm. So I have to correct it. 
So you want to control what you do in that temporary situation. Yes. Um, Mr. Fuller, uh, the caller referenced page 66. I don't know if you have that there, but it is. Is that in the Word Guide? No, no. It no, is no, in the basic book. Yes, it's in the basic right, book. Revise it. Under um, Area 1, under Economics, and it says control your temper. Could you elaborate or read that paragraph into the hearing of those that may not have the book, what you wrote there? Page uh, 66. I have it right here. Yeah, okay. Right. Temper serves a purpose, but it should be controlled. I think I just said that. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm reading from it now, page 66 in the textbook for victims of white supremacy. Temper serves a purpose, but it should be controlled. Understand what is happening and why. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how you control your temper. Understand what is happening and why. Before you go off, I mean, storming up and down the hall and cursing people out and stuff like that. Don't do any of that. Just be quiet. Try to understand what is happening and why. Listen to what is being said and why. React to every situation by using constructive logic. Mm -hmm. In other words, once you, you know, you don't, like I said, don't lose your temper. Keep it with you, okay, because you're going to need it to, to do what? To listen to what is being said and why. Okay. And react to every situation by using constructive logic. Mm -hmm. In other words, just look around you and see what people are doing, what they are saying, and what not that's causing you to lose your temper. Yes. yes. And just back off for a minute and mm -hmm. do some thinking. Mm -hmm. Do not allow yourself to be pro pro provoked into doing or saying anything that you are likely to regret doing or saying. Mm -hmm. That's real important. Yes. Do not allow yourself to be provoked into doing or saying anything that you are likely to regret doing or saying. Mm -hmm. And that happens on a lot of jobs. Yes, that sir. In a lot of situations, in beer taverns and whatnot. Yeah, or... I mean, hey, well, back off. The world of Illinois. You know, right. Take, take a look around mm -hmm. now and stop and think. Now, what's the best thing to do? And what's the best, or what's the thing you definitely shouldn't do? Mm -hmm. Or say. Continue, please. So, the whole thing is to make this situation better. Yes. Do not hit, mm -hmm. curse, or name call any person who seems to be trying to provoke and or trick you into doing or saying something that you will regret. Mm. Mm. Be prepared. And be alert for quote unquote temper provoking traps. Because sometimes people will trap you into doing something that you will regret later. Yes, sir. See, they already predict. They sit around and plan. They say, well, mm -hmm. you can push his buttons or her buttons. Yes, sir. We know that that will make that person mad. We have run tests on it. So we will really do it this morning because we're going to make them mad and they're really going to mess up. Because they're going to go off. They're going to start kicking things over, knocking things over, breaking stuff, cursing people out. I mean, they're going to grab the foreman maybe by the collar and whatnot, and then they're going to be in trouble for the rest of their lives. Yes. Could you, right? could you complete that so that those that don't have the book can understand what you right. wrote? Mm -hmm. Do your best to be calm and methodical in doing what is most constructive in stressful situations. Mm -hmm. Practice making plans on how best to speak and or act in stress-provoking situations. And here's the bottom line here. Yes. Codify huh. everything that you do and not do in hostile situations. There it is. In other words, have a plan before this stuff starts. You say, oh, oh, sooner or later, it's going to be some mess in this place. I know it's going to be some mess. There it is. Because I'm around a whole bunch of people who start mess. I can see that. So you already have your plan about what you're going to do when the mess starts. Mm. Don't wait until it starts. 
and then try to think about what you're going to do at the last minute. Because most likely your temper will take over. Mm. And then you will lose control to your regret. Mm. You yep. don't want to do that. Yes, sir. That was Have hard. a plan, which means codify exactly what you're going to say when the going gets hot. Mm-hmm. And exactly what you're going to do. Have mm. this plan, hey, you know, days in advance, a year in advance. Uh, right. But you see it coming. Okay. Outstanding right. question by uh, our callers. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap up the first hour, so let me do this. Talk team at radio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. Uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. And thank you, that last caller. That was outstanding. We'll be back for the second hour right after these. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com Talktainment Radio Worldwide Sound. Talktainmentradio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of Talktainmentradio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. Live call-in talk show. Dial 1-877-932-9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTamerRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTamerRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. And now... Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Okay. Welcome to the second hour of TalkTainmentRadio.com. You are listening to the compensatory concept. So let me read it as the script says, we go where you go. On the world's greatest radio, and that is TalkTainmentRadio.com. You are now in touch with the compensatory concept with Mr. Uh, Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, and this is Radio the Way It Should Be Heard. This is Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019, and our topic of discussion is words. The use of words. Uh, the construction of sentences so that you can interpret what is being said and what you are saying, and I have to commend the callers, you have really been on it today and asking very good questions, you know, concerning the use of words, because my experience in in white supremacy racism and that, is that they're always trying to trick you, and you don't always understand. So you need to understand, as Mr. Fuller has indicated, by doing what? Asking questions. Okay. Uh, 1-877-932-9766 is the number that you can call to get in contact with the show. Or you can also go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage and just click on Listen Live and you can listen live. But right now, we are going to go to the phone lines, uh, line number one. Go ahead, uh, caller. You're on with Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Uh, I was just listening to the previous caller, and he asked about the word temper. And Mr. Fuller represented to temporary. As I was taught when I was a kid, it was more like temperature, meaning when you got in your temper, you need to keep your cool. Don't get too hot-headed, whatever. So that's the way uh, I always learned it mm-hmm. in order to control it. Now, when I have a lot of friends in academia, and a lot of them are going into what they call diversity and inclusion. And when I look at those words, I don't look at the definition of a word. I look at the 
etymological base of a word. So when they say diversity and inclusion, it's like they have this idea of that, that's a, a practice of getting us in or whatever. Is that what that word means, sir? No, not at all. If you look up inclusion, the et 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 etymology of it, it okay. means keep out. Okay, I got you. And diversity, when you break that down, die means two, verse means talk. That's double talk. Double, the double talking of keeping out. Yes. I break words down like that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get Mr. Fuller's pr perspective on how I, how I look at that and how I use that. Am I on the right track or am I just out there? Okay. <laughs> okay. Mr. Fuller? Well, if it works, so you always do what works. And so if what you're doing works for you, uh, without any problems, you go forward with that. What is recommended in the code book is that when a person uses any word, a word is just, uh, no word means anything until the person who is using the word explains what he or she means. That's the best way. Sometimes people will say, well, that's not what the dictionary says, but you don't go by what the dictionary says because dictionaries change. Yes. They change all the time. Yes. In every language. So therefore, when a person says, well, what we need here is more diversity, then you say, you hold up your hand right then, <laughs> if you don't understand what that word yeah, means. what is that? Even if you have read and researched in many books what the word does mean according to that book that you read, but you don't know what the person means when he or she is using it, when that person is using it. So the codified procedure is, say, sir, uh... I, I, what do you mean by the word diversity? And the person sometimes, if the white, if it's a white supremacist, they will do this. Sometimes they will say, "Oh, yeah, come on, buddy, you know what that means." Yes. You know, see, that's the way they'll go with it. Mm -hmm. you watch mm -hmm. out for that, and you say, "Sir, <laughs> no, I don't." Yeah. I, I have heard different versions of what it means. I have an idea of what it means when I use it, but I don't know what you mean when you use it. So if you do not mind, sir or ma'am, ma mm -hmm. explaining what you mean when you say diversity. Exactly. So once you ask the question, don't help them with the answer. That's another thing that's real important. Once you ask a person a question, do not, once they start uh, saying what the answer is, and you jump in and saying, well, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I think I see what you mean now, uh, and, and I don't agree with that. No, don't resist the urge to do that. I've seen people do that over and over again. That's always a mistake. Yes, sir. Once you put that question mark behind your question, don't say anything at all. Wait for the person to answer the question. And another thing, never move to the second question before you have gotten a satisfactory answer to the first one. Yes, sir. And uh, the reason for that is what? To avoid what? Confusion. Confusion. Yes. yes. Because that's what the white supremacists, with their words, they are looking to do. They are mm -hmm. always looking to confuse their victim. Yes. And they use words to do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And and the brother used the word ethnological. I believe that's how, what he said. And at first, I didn't know what he was saying. So I asked him, what do you mean? Of course, he went in diversity, but it was that word. Uh, anyway, it was a derivative of the word ethnological. Etymology, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, excuse me if I'm not, but I understood what he was saying then, and then that made, when he said the word diversity, it made it clear, because he was trying to get an understanding of what they were saying, so he went back to what that word meant. Good call, brother, good call. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, line number what? What am I? One? Okay. Line number one, you are on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Fuller. It's Don Elegant. Um, the word temper, I was wondering if it was associated with temperament also because I know that some things that get a person from 0 to 100 might not get another person from 0 to 100 in the same time frame. So maybe is that because of their understanding or their temperament, you know, their tolerance to certain words and situations that they might be able to control their emotions 
better than others. And um, another question is the word plan. Obviously, the white supremacists have a plan, so would it be fair to say that if everybody that's non-white doesn't have a plan to promote justice, that they're indirectly saying that they're going with the white supremacist plan? Thank you. All right, Mr. Fuller. Well, the first question is about the temper thing. Uh, Temp- yeah, here, yeah. Here mm-hmm. again, uh, we'll just go over that again. Any word that is used by anybody, uh, you know, you, or if you use the word, just understand the word that you are using and what you mean by it, and be willing to explain in fine detail exactly what you mean when you use the word. Because all you're trying to do is just communicate. A word is nothing but a tool. Like a pair of pliers or a saw or a screwdriver or a hammer. It's just a tool for accomplishing a task. So you want everybody to understand what you're using a word for to, and what task you're trying to accomplish. Yes, sir. Like we went from temper to diversity. You just say, okay, what is diversity? What is diversity? And what is it supposed to do? Yes. See, if we once we get all this diversity, what have we got? I mean, and is it constructive? So you might have two hundred questions right behind that one word. Mm-hmm. See, what? What? Hey, you know, I, you know, I didn't bring up anything about diversity, sir or ma'am. All right, but since you brought it up, what is it? And uh, is it something we should have? Oh, yes, diversity is something we should have. Okay. All right, well, what is it? And then uh, what are we going to do with it once we get it? Okay? Because, you know, when you do things, you're looking for a reason for doing it. And it's supposed to be, presumably, a constructive result. And you'll definitely ask that question. Once we get all this diversity... What's going to be the mm-hmm. constructive result? Yes, sir. Once you describe what you mean by what you mean by it in the first place. Hmm. What was that second question? Uh, I, it just it just escaped me. But I will say this, though. It would be safe to say never assume, assume that you know what somebody else is saying. Absolutely. Because that is a dangerous thing that is done almost every minute of every day, everywhere in every area of activity. And why, that's why you have this confusion throughout the entire planet in what? In economics, even the word economics itself. People will say, well, you don't have to correct the econ- economic system. Well, that calls for a question right there. What do you mean yes. by correct economic system? What is the correct economic system, sir? A oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, well, it gets kind of involved, so I don't have time to discuss all of that, wouldn't I? Well, uh, sir, do you think that we can find time in the future? Because you just told me something that I'm supposed to understand, and I don't understand it until you explain it. Hmm. What is a correct economic system? What do you do to have one? All right. And what's supposed to be the constructive result of a correct economic economic system according to you okay and uh, and i'm just saying uh, that's the first area of activity and then you do the same thing education mm-hmm. what do you mean by education education and what it you know well that's learning okay learning what in order to do what what's going to be the result after i get educated <laughs> yes. you know be specific, and what's the time frame, all right? I mean, I might need to know what I need to know right now uh, uh, within the next two weeks because I need to be educated in that particular thing, okay? Uh, you know, be specific. Yes. And then entertainment, labor, law, politics. You don't want confusion in any of these things. An explanation for words eliminates confusion. Religion, sex. If a person says something about, you know, my religion is something that you never even heard the word before, you say, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. What is that religion? And what does that religion require you to do? And what's going to be the result of your religion when it's practiced by everybody? If you want everybody to practice it. 
of what's going to be the result in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics. Uh, what does your religion tell you to do when it comes to killing people, war? I mean, does your religion cover that? Do you kill people under some circumstances? Under what circumstances? Let's go into some details here. Because some religions require you to go to war. Other religions say you don't ever kill anybody for any reason. Thou shalt not kill. Okay? Well, any exceptions to that in your religion? And if they have some exceptions, what exceptions? When? Questions, 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 questions. Questions, questions, questions. Sometimes you'll have maybe 500 questions about what? One word. One word. Wow. TalkTainmentRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and politics. Let me do three of them here. Uh, Let's do this one. Uh, Let's go. This is Libby, new money, and a conversation with Don Karima. Now, these shows are all exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com, and we say this every week, but if you haven't listened to one of these shows, maybe your time is whatever, maybe you need to, to invest just a little time just to see what the show is about and what words that they are saying that you can interpret or whatever you need to glean from uh, these programs. But one thing about it for sure, you won't hear them nowhere else but right here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. By the way, that's radio the way it should be heard. But anyway, all you have to do is go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage, click on programs, and you're there. You're right there. And you get a little bio and a little information on the um, show personality and what the show is about. All that from TalkTainmentRadio.com. That's radio the way it should be heard. My name is Mr. Bobby. I am the co-host on The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. We have been discussing words. What do they mean? What do you mean by words? interpretations, sentence structure, and all that goes with words. What is being said? And Mr. Fuller has offered his suggestions about that. As a matter of fact, he has been referring to the book, uh, which is the uh, United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, your your operating manual, if you read. And this is, this is one reason why you should get the book. A caller called in and referenced page 66 about uh, temper. That was under the first area of people activity uh, economics. And it was a good discussion about that. If you haven't heard it, you know, replay the tape. But this is why you should get this operating manual so that you can see what is being said. With that being said, let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I was the one that called earlier about etymology. Yes, etymology. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and Mr. Fuller referenced what I've always said to people. When you have a definition, definitions always change. Etymology is the origin of their words. Yes. So I always go back to that. And say, okay, you go back and look at those words. You will get a good sense of what they're saying, telling you with that and then you can flip it so i turn around and do what he says i'll ask questions based on the origin of a word not what they're defined as because they'll flip it all the time based on the conversation they have with different people so like with diversity at one point we the people of color would say oh that's, that's a black and white well white supremacy come back to know that's a yellow orange brown and blue <laughs> so you gotta get the definition in that now my question my second question and i'll be done for today when they when a white supremacist sees that you understand the game that they're playing, they throw out the card of why are you why are you dealing with semantics? What does that mean? What are they telling me when they say that? That is an excellent question, Mr. Well, Fuller. What, what are they telling you when they say what? That's it. That's it. Why are you dealing with semantics? The masses. Semantics. 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 Yes. Yes. And the question is, why are we dealing with semantics? 
Yeah. And you say sometimes people will raise that question. Yeah, when I when they you know when they know that I know how to play the game, where I know they know that I can pick up on the words that they're saying, and what they're really saying, they don't want to talk anymore because they'll turn around and say, "Well, I'm not getting into semantics with you." That's what they'll do. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then you ask uh, the logical question, and what would that be? What is semantics? What is semantics? <laughs> what is semantics? <laughs> what is semantics? <laughs> I mean, you always go with what that person is saying to you. That's, that, so you don't have to start scratching your head. You just listen to what the person said, mm -hmm. and the person went from a set of one words to a set of more words, different words. And so they mentioned something now that they hadn't mentioned before. Uh, and they put it in the form of a question. They did. Why are you dealing in semantics? That was the question. Well, every question has an answer. But sometimes you have to have, before you can answer the question, you have to deal with another question, and that is, what do you mean by what you just said? Mm -hmm. So you <laughs> said, why are you dealing in semantics? And you say, well, sir, uh, I didn't say anything about semantics, but you just did. So will you explain to me, sir or ma'am? And always be polite. Say, don't argue. Just, everything will go right where it needs to go. Just stay in the question and answer lane. That's all you have to remember. Say, uh, say gotta, what, gotta, what do you mean, sir? Or what do you mean, ma'am, by the word semantics? Mm -hmm. Since I didn't mention semantics, you did. All right? So if you tell me what you mean uh, when you ask me. Why am I dealing in semantics when I didn't say anything about semantics? <laughs> I just asked you, when are you all going to put some signs at the bus stop? <laughs> and you're talking about semantics. So I want to know how I'd that get in here. <laughs> you know, what, you know and see, just always pay attention to what the other person is saying. Uh, absolutely. And once you ask the question, remember this. Don't start elaborating, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and don't start helping them with the answer based on what you think they ought to mean. See, let them explain exactly, because they're real tricky. The white supremacists are real tricky when they'll have you trying to explain what they ought, what they should mean, and they'll take up the next hour just letting you talk. Mm -hmm. All right, and you, and the more you talk, the more you want to talk. Yes, that's just a sort of an instinctive thing. Mm -hmm. So you'll take up another half an hour when you started off trying to get this person to explain what semantics mean, mm -hmm. and you wind up giving your version of what your research tells you that it meant. So he would just wind up after half an hour saying, "Well." That's your view, and you're entitled to that, and all like that. So we'll move on to the next question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what has happened is they got out of saying what they meant. They sure did, and they were real shrewd at doing it because, particularly, you know, people of color, black people in the northwestern hemisphere, we have a tendency in discussions with white people to try to show that we're intelligent, <laughs> all right? <laughs> yeah. And they, they know that, mm -hmm. okay? So they will just let you talk, okay? Yeah. And say whatever you got to say, and they'll say, well, you know, what you're saying is real interesting. Mm -hmm. I never really thought of that. And they'll <laughs> thought of all of it way in advance. <laughs> way in advance, All right? Yes. But what they are doing really is manipulating you into saying a whole bunch of things that had nothing to do with what they started out talking nothing. about. Nothing. Yeah, I like what the brother said. He understands how to play the game because they are playing the game on you. Let's go to the phone lines here. Uh, caller, you are on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead with your question. Hello, yes. Good morning. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. Okay, good. I'm glad we're talking about words because um, there's a new acronym going around and it's called ADOS. Are you familiar with that, Mr. Fuller? No, sir. Have me okay. A Let me explain. O -S. Yes. They keep coming up with a whole bunch of acronyms. There's going to yes, be thousands do. of them. Yes. And, it, and it's funny with this one. It's ADOS. 
Now, this this concept called ADOS, which in short means American Descendants of Slavery, and the mission statement of the ADOS is to demand reparations, or as you would say, compensation, from the United States, and they want these set-asides in the areas specifically I noticed of economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, and politics. So, the question is, and, and let me be clear, this is just for American descendants of slaves, not Haitian, not Trinidadian, not Guyanese, specifically American, okay? Now, the question I have for you is, uh, should those who claim to be American black descendants of slaves have a claim to be repaired? And is this divisive or constructive for those non-whites who claim to be American descendants of slavery? Well, the way I approach it, uh, a lot of what's in the compensatory code that I have written is to cut right to the chase to say the one thing that will wrap up everything. No dribbling down the court. If whatever you say, make it a slam dunk. No dribbling down the court, ever. No passing the ball back and forth. Just throw it from one end of the court to the other, from any spot on the court, right into the basket, every time you touch the ball. That's what compensatory codification aims to do. So to cut right to that chase, you just simply say, Sir... Rather than go into all these details about Haitians and, and when this happened and when the Haitian Revolution was and when the Jamaican Revolution, I mean, uh, failed or if there was one that failed and all like that and what reparations should be given to the black people who were in Mississippi versus the black people who were in New York back in the 1800s. Hey, we don't even approach it from that. When you start talking about com compensation, According to the textbook, we say one thing, replace the entire system. Entire. Yes. Of white supremacy worldwide with the system of justice. And then you explain what justice means. Guarantee. Guarantee that no person is mistreated. Nothing less than that. We ain't talking about nickel and diamond here. We talking about a massive world system. Guarantee that no person is mistreated at no time for any reason and guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Anything less than that is not worth discussing at all. And we're talking about in nine areas of activity covering this entire planet. Yes, sir because the system of white supremacy covers the entire planet. So what you want to do, or what is, we think you're trying to do, is get into a long, drawn-out debate, which we have already had millions of those, about nickel and diamond. Who's going to get a little piece of this? Who's going to get a little piece of that? And maybe 50 years from now, uh, you know, we'll come up with a new program where well, now we're going to reconsider what Indian tribe is going to get a little piece of this and a little piece of that. Mm. No. Replace this entire system. Mm. And come up with a system of justice in all nine areas of activity mm. and do it by, this is Wednesday evening, do it by Thursday evening. Yes. That's what we're talking about here. So the lady that told LeBron James was just shut up and dribble, you just saying, just slam dunk it. Slam dunking. I mean, from any, <laughs> see, codification is about slam dunking from any place on the court. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, if you're going to make a football analogy, counter racist codification is about make a touchdown every time you touch the ball. All right. Period. Period. See what I mean? Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't touch the ball unless you're going to make a touchdown. Period. <laughs> yes, All right. sir. That's bringing it, that's bringing it in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey. Uh, you know, making it exciting and all the drama and all like that. See, because the white supremacists, they figured out we have trained black people to love drama. <laughs> yes. See, we like, we like, before we get to the point, we got to go through all of this and all of that, all right, to finally get to the point. <laughs> got to do all this strutting around and whatnot. No, no, hey, this is all about 
movement and getting things done swiftly, constructively, and 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 definitely uh, in a methodical manner. Uh-huh. All right, but do it fast. But do it in a methodical manner and do it efficiently. Mm-hmm. You got to do it. That's codification. Not all of this. Well, let's see now. Uh, next year, let's come up with a program. Back in the old days, I used to refer to it as, you know, when I saw black people buying into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I was 13 years old, and I coined a term for it. <laughs> uh, I called it, I, you know, I did some name calling at that time, which I shouldn't have done. But I called them next election Negroes. Woo! <laughs> right. Okay, we got to hold said, on. You know, you just had an election yesterday. <laughs> No, they already talking about the next election. Mm. What are you going to do with this election? Okay, we got to hold it right. right. Uh, let, let's just say this, uh, Mr. Fuller, some people have called in or written me and wanted to know, did you get a chance to watch uh, or look at The Matrix, Get Out, or Black Panther? And then they made a few uh, suggestions as the uh, whole Purge series, the Purge election year, and also uh, select ask if you have seen or should see The Usual Suspects, Unbreakable, and The Game. Brother McKinley uh, wrote in you know, uh, about that. Uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to do that because your schedule is like mine or like my similar because I'm in the stacks all the time researching stuff but they wanted to know that and perhaps you could add those to your list of, of movies um, that uh, that you have enunciated on in previous uh, shows so um, yeah that's the usual suspects unbreakable the game and the election purge has been suggested as that let's go to the phone lines quickly uh, line number one you're on with Mr. Fuller Yes, hello, Mr. Bobby and Mr. Fuller. Um, it's Darno, and um, I wanted to um ask if what Mr. Fuller was talking about, as far as the slam dunking and um getting things done quick, is is that because um the white supremacists have us dubbed as incremental people? Because I believe Mr. Fuller he had a video where he said that um black people are incremental people, so we're supposed to just you know be going at a certain pace, or that's what we expect it to be. And um, I also have a, a statement about when I was on a, the workplace uh, a couple years back. I was working at a, um, a fast food um, restaurant, and me and a non-white person were out back of the establishment on a smoke break, and a female um, suspected white supremacist came back out also behind us, and she said, what are you, quote-unquote, what are you people doing out here? And I was kind of, like, taken aback because... I didn't know what she meant by it, but I kind of had a suspicion. So I asked her, I was like, what do you mean by you people? And she kind of didn't, like, she kind of, like, second looked at me, like, like, like she, like, knew what it was going to lead to if she answered that question. So she kind of went around it and um, confused me, and she was like, you know what I mean? And she kind of left it in my ballpark. But I didn't respond, but I just left it alone. Thank you. That's it. Okay, Mr. Fuller, you care to respond to that before we move on to the next call? I know it's under VGQ, but. Yes, well, he was recounting an incident, but the question that he asked was correct. I mean, trying to get clarity, see? If someone is talking to you, the first thing you want to get clear is what they are saying, and and then why they are saying it, and what the result is supposed to be. So the lady said, uh, what was the question? What do you What are you people doing here? Well, he answered by asking the question, what do you mean by you people? You people. What kind of people are you people? <laughs> All right? Yeah. But don't help them with the answer. Just, just wait. And don't move to the second question until you get the first question answered. Why? Because if you do, you're adding to the confusion. See, so make sure that you get the first question well understood. All right? Even if it takes an hour. Say, lady, you haven't explained to me what you mean by you people. You know, right. now you're going on telling me about something else. I asked me about something else. I first want to know what do you mean by you, you people? people? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you people. You know, is that the letter U or the word U? Y O U? Yeah. Or, or you know, yeah. What? What? Yeah. What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah. Are we making a U turn? I don't know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me. So, Explain but, yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying this for the audience. Now. Yes, you yes. Ask, but you don't ask all of this. You just stick with what the person said. So you use exact words that they said. Exactly. What do you mean 
by you people. And you can even ask, are you one of you people? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can a, ask her that. Make a good point. Thank but you. What's the difference between <laughs> me being you people and you being you people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for clarity. You a difference. Yeah. You might have a dozen questions just about that alone before you even move to the second question. <laughs> but you want to get what? Clarity. Clarity. In order to eliminate what? Confusion. Confusion. That's, okay. that's what you never want to leave a situation confused. Mm hmm. Okay, thank you to uh, Wayne Owen Richards about the uh, acronyms. He said, one should always know and remember TLA. The acronym stands for three-letter acronym. Hmm, good point, Brother Wayne. Uh, let's go to the phone line. What line am I on? Two, one, two. Okay, line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Good morning, Mr. Fuller. How you doing, sir? I'm still learning. Wonderful. This is James calling from North Carolina. Mr. Fuller, um, I know you discussed your books earlier during the program, and you explained what their purposes are. And if I understood you correctly, you said that um, the revised expanded edition has all the information plus more um, than the original book. Is that correct? That's correct. That was okay. my intention. Yes, and I think I think I think I did that. Uh, if you look at the original 1984 edition, rather, that's not the real original. The original is 1957, but the 1984 was the one that I still carry. Okay, so that uh, if you look in the beginning, almost all of the beginning of the book is also duplicated in the revised expanded 2016 edition okay well the reason why i asked you that question sir is i'm at your website right now yes, and i sir. see um information that gives instructions on how a person can order these i already okay. have all three but you know i'm just taking a look at the information on your website and it reads um right here where i'm about to read it says Backed by popular demand, the original version of the code book. For a limited time only, order your keepsake copy of the original version of the code book. This limited edition copy contains material not available in the revised expanded edition. Many readers regard this book as the foundation of Millie Fuller's code books. To fully understand the principles of the code, this original copy is a must. Was you aware of that, sir? Oh, I'm not aware of that. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to look. I'll, I'll get in touch with the people who put that up there. I'll get rid of that last line. Uh, no, I'm, I don't want that. You know. To be honest, sir, I didn't think you were. No, I'm, I'm not trying to. to I'm, I'm not, not out here trying to sell books as such. I'm trying yes, to sir. promote uh, thought, speech, and action that will lead to the end of a system of racism. See, so it's not about a book, neither full as cold book. It's about trying to get this job done. But I, I have to do it through the vehicle of a book. I found out that was, at the time, that was the only vehicle I really had. Now I have more venues. I try to keep people centered on the books, rather, than I do on programs like TalkTainmentRadio.com because I'm I don't want people to get the idea that Neely Fuller is somebody's leader or mentor. Sometimes I'm referred to as being the mentor of a, a lot of people. I hope not. Don't follow Neely Fuller anywhere. I mean, Neely Fuller is not the mentorship. Logic is the mentorship. That came with the universe. Logic will not fail you because that's what Neely Fuller is trying to follow. But Neely Fuller makes mistakes just like Evidently, if I'm saying people must have the original book, uh, that that that's a mistake. Now, you know, you don't just must have it. I mean, it might be convenient because some people have said they, they kind of like the old book because they, uh, at least one person said they wouldn't have understood the second book, which I don't understand this, if they hadn't seen the first one. And then yes, some sir. people 
sort of said they like the format in the old book. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, get it actually, I don't understand actually, that myself. Yeah, what it actually says, I'm going to read it again, sir. It says, to fully understand the principles of the code, this original copy is a must. It doesn't read that a person has to have the book. It says, to fully understand the principles of the code, this original copy is a must. And the only reason why I pointed that out, sir, is because based on what you said earlier in the program, and I've heard you say it several times before, that the revised expanded edition is really all a person needs. They don't need the original copy. If I understood you correctly. But that I is correct. Out, that, is, that is strictly my I just, opinion. But see, the thing is, I just didn't want anyone to become confused. I mean, you still... Yes, well, I don't want to add no confusion, confusion, so I'm going to look at that. I haven't really, I've never even seen it up on that site. But I'm going to, you know, I, I don't have access to it right now. But I'm going to check that out. Because that, well, that uh, I mean, I'm not supposed to send any kind of confusing signals like that, period. So that was my way of just trying to help. Yes, sir. And that helped. I hope that helped a lot. I'm going to have to get on that right away. All righty. Uh, hey, hey, James from North Carolina, thank you very much. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just feel like it's my duty. You know, that's what was the full Yes, correct. Right. You know, correct. I feel like Beautiful it's my right duty thing. that yeah. I should point that out because... Like Never said, less than the best. You know, we don't need any confusion. Right. No, no confusion. No confusion. Okay. All thank right. you. Thank, have a good day. All right. Thank you very much, James. I, I just want to commend the, 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 the callers, the listeners. Man, you have just been if you will, Mr. Fuller, they've been off the chain today uh, in, in, in asking questions, which is very good, uh, sharing their different stories, like the brother got me the, the correct pronunciation, the etymology and all that kind of stuff, and answering uh, uh, or uh, challenging, you know, the qu it's just been very good. And even James here, who is a regular caller uh, from North Carolina, Mr. Fuller, I don't know if you were aware of this, but he actually gave the intro to the section that we... Uh, give you every uh, 45 minutes after the program about the discussion of your book and that was a lively uh, discussion you know about your book you know where you can get it uh, the site the information that is on your book so before we move on to the next question would you like to add anything on uh, that discussion of the uh, of your book well, definitely I want to clear that up about what that discussion was just before. And that is, that 1984 edition that's up there on that website, you get that only based, if, based on what some people have said. If you just want to add on the, the original copy and just have that as, you know, because you just want it. But... Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't have any intention of putting that there as a must for a background of the 2016 edition. No, the 2016 edition and the 2010 ed edition or word guide are the books that are the primary copies. Okay. That were up there before this other copy even put up there. Okay. That, that, that 1984 edition was put up there just by people who said that they wanted that, that it should be there. And so that's just really all that I'm saying about it. I mean, some people have asked for it. For what reason, I do not understand. But they say they understand it, the people who have made that request. So, but I'm saying that if I was going to buy my own book, I mean, I would start with the 2016 edition and then if I had extra money get the word guide too because the word guide is I think important uh, but the other book would just be for background or reference purposes mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to make that explicit good, good. on that website Okay, because I don't want that kind of confusion Absolutely. I'm just trying to I'm not trying to hustle All right, this is not about running a hustle on black people black people get hustled too much I don't want that I mean, I'm not trying to run any kind of hustle at all. I hope not. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So.
So producejustice.com will take care of it and, and, and all that a person needs to do right. to get the book. Okay, 1957. Right. Hmm, that, that's interesting. Uh, okay, uh, let's do this. Uh, okay, Homeschool 257. He says this, Mr. Fuller. Uh, good rising, Mr. Fuller. Uh, Mr. Fuller, African-American women are four times more likely to die during childbirth than white women, and African-American children are twice as likely to die before their first birthday than white children. What is the compensatory response to this problem? Oh, it's listed in the textbook. Uh, the white supremacists have what you call population tailoring, racial population tailoring, among the six strategies. That's one of them. And they do this all the time. I mean, pours in the water, uh, uh, food that's not nourishing, but tastes excellent. Anywhere you find black people in the northwestern hemisphere, you find plenty of what? Of what's supposed to be food. And they call them black people, even give them, somebody made up a term for them, I don't know who. They call it food deserts. Mm. Where you find black people, you don't find real food. Mm -hmm. You find something that's imitation food. Yes, yes. It's got a lot of salt and sugar in it, and it tastes good, but it's not nourishing to you. In fact, it's killing you. Yes. Okay? So that's what the white supremacists put on their shelves. And they'll put it in gaudy packages and whatnot, and make it, you know, uh, sodas, 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 from what I've been led to understand, and I found out on my own because I stopped drinking. I used to drink a lot of root beer, me and myself, and I was having headaches. I didn't make the connection. I stopped drinking the root beer. I stopped getting headaches. Me also. Me also. All right. And a lot of those uh, sodas are making you sick. Mm -hmm. And you don't know the cause of you being sick or why you're always uh, not having the energy that you should have because they'll advertise that that stuff gives you energy. Yeah, energy drink, yeah, right. There's nothing in it that'll give you energy at all. Mm -hmm. You'll be better off just drinking water. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good, 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 good question. Okay, um... All right, let's go to this here. Uh, this is, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. But anyway, it says this. Mr. Fuller, the American descendants of slavery have started a movement stating that the slaves in America are owed money by America and are owed money by other descendants of slaves because they came here to eat off of the work that American slaves did. As you always say, Mr. Fuller, the white supremacists thrive in confusion, and this looks to be creating mass confusion and anger between black people. Can you, Mr. Fuller, think of any way that the white supremacists will capitalize on this confusion for the benefit of white supremacy? Oh, in every way that they can. Anything that looks like it might cause some type of animosity between one non-white person and another, the white supremacists will take just a very brief time and study it, because it doesn't take them much. They, they have been at this business a long time, and they will say, hey, here's another opportunity, and they will spread whatever that animosity is yes. by whatever means they can. They would immediately grab hold to it and just spread it as far as it will go in order to keep non-white people, what, confused and combative among themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you keep your prisoners just always focusing on each other, if you've got a bunch of prisoners of war, which is what we all are according to the code, if you're a person of color on the planet, on the planet, not just in one section of the planet, anywhere on the planet, if you're a person that's classified as non-white, you are a prisoner of war of the people who believe in white supremacy. That doesn't mean all white people, right. but that means the most powerful and the smartest ones. On the basis of evidence, they are the white supremacists, because you can't be ignorant and be supreme over anybody for very long, all right, because the people who are smart will realize you're ignorant 
then they will know how to use their abilities by being smart to overcome your ignorance and your power or what you think was your power because ignorance and power do not go together. No, they don't. Not at all. All right? And so smart people will always dominate people who are not smart. So that's why the white supremacists have even uh, tried to get the non-white people of the planet not to want to learn anything except what? What they teach them and what they teach them is how to do stupid stuff. So black people, we just have a tendency. Yes, sir. Without us even being aware of it. To gravitate toward anything that is stupid and are silly. And we want to be right in the middle of it. Okay. Uh, let me get this last phone call. We're up against time here, but go ahead, caller. You're on with Mr. Ford quickly. Yes, I will make this uh, concise. I was compelled to call in again. The ADOS specifically doesn't want money from other black folk. The ADOS wants money from or compensation from the United States. And, you know, to follow up what you said, Mr. Fuller, um, you know, when you look at it, you want things as a slam dunk. Correct. I understand that. But you got to look. You always reference Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne. His whole movement wasn't a slam dunk. It took time for him to escape. So I say that to say maybe ADOS, maybe you should look more into it, you know, in your spare time to see what it's about. That's just a suggestion. But a lot of people misuse the concept. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. So they can go to ADOS101.com and figure it out. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of stuff, but... It's, it's interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, th- thank you very much, caller. Um, in response to that, Mr. Fuller, uh, somebody else other than this brother right here had called in about uh, the uh, ADOS situation, and he made, that other caller a uh, writer made his opinion of that. But this caller here, we don't, we don't want to make confusion on it. He did not say what that other brother uh, said using ADOS. Okay, anyway, we're about... Uh, about two minutes away from wrapping up the show. Mr. Fuller, speaking about words, uh, is there another comment or something you would like to make mention or important that we should